All right. I have put in the work. I've done my homework. I've talked to people in the know. I've reached out to every reporter, you know, boxing guru, expert, uh, known to man, <laughs> trying to figure out who will be the next opponent for Terrence Crawford. All right, counterpunch boxing. How you do, how you doing out there, everybody? I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to kind of take my time with the video. The video, I'm gonna, I promise it will be under 10 minutes, but. Uh, you know, I really want to, because I, I put a lot of work into this. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I, I've, I'm i like a, you know, internet detective trying to figure out who Terrence Crawford is going to fight next, um, because it's like the big question out there. And I've narrowed it down to four people, and um, out of the four, I'm pretty confident I know who it will be. But we know in boxing, anything can change. Um even if they know who it is right now, it can change. I mean, that's like the nature of boxing. I mean, you, you don't know until the bell rings. I mean, even when the bell rings, I mean, you still don't know. I mean, it's just like, so boxing is so very unpredictable. But, you know, I think I've got it figured out. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Right now, I want to go over uh, the four. But, you know, quickly, Terrence Crawford, he has right now the WBC and the WBO. Now, he said himself that he wants to become the undisputed light welterweight champion, meaning he wants to he wants to carry all four belts, the WBC, WBO, WBA and the IBF. Now, he he needs two belts. He has, you know, he's got two. He needs two more to become the undisputed. Now, the last light uh, welterweight, the last 145-pound fighter to be the undisputed uh, light welterweight was uh, Costa Taizu uh, back in, I think it was uh, 2002 or 2003. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a long time. I mean, we're, here we are going into 2017. Uh, what is that, 14 years ago? I mean, my math is terrible, but yeah, it's like 14 years ago. It's been 14 years since uh, we've had an undisputed light welterweight champion. So, And then uh, before that, it was, uh, I believe, I think it was like Eddie Perkins in like the, in like the early 1960s or something like that. And then if I remember correct, um, Carlos Hernandez. So I remember it was Carlos Hernandez and Eddie, uh, Eddie Perkins back in the 60s, okay? So you have, I don't even remember. It might, it might be like the 70s. I can't remember. But, you know, you got, you know, probably the, the mid to late 60s, early 70s, you had an undisputed champion, uh, Eddie Perkins and Carlos Hernandez. And then moving up, Costa Cost, uh, Taizu. I always mess his name up, you know, I apologize, but you know who I'm talking about. Uh, he was in 20, uh, 2003, and here we are, 2017, and it looks like Terrence Crawford, he, he can pull it off. Because, I mean, the guy standing in his way, he can beat him, okay? Right here, this man right here, okay, Ricky Burns. Now... Ricky Burns is holding the WBA, but if you remember in 2014, uh, Crawford already beat Ricky Burns in 2014, and back that's how he got the WBO, or I believe I believe it was the WBO or the WBC. I can't remember the one of the two belts that he's holding. I think it was the uh, the WBO uh, back in <clears throat> 2014 by defeating Ricky Burns, and then he went on. Remember, he went on to fight or Yorkus Gamboa, Ray Beltran. Uh, you know, we know the rest. Okay, so uh, he's had that belt for a while now. Okay, um, and they've al they're already kind of talking about making the fight uh, between Terrence Crawford and Ricky Ricky Burns. So I'm this is really my number one pick. I mean, I don't want to like spoil the video for you. Uh, now, option number two would be this man right here, Julius Ndongo, okay, and dang, is, I, I don't know if I'm butchering his name, guys, I had to actually look him up, I mean, I'm very familiar with everyone on on Crawford's resume, uh, except this guy right here, it's Julius I-N-D-O-N-G-O, Ndongo, and and, and, and Ndongo, I, who knows, I mean, uh, <laughs> it sounds kind of weird saying Ndongo, uh, so maybe you guys can help me out in the comments section, because honestly, I mean, I don't know how I overlooked this guy. I mean, like I said, I'm very familiar with his entire resume. But this guy right here, 
uh, holding the IBF. Um, you know, he does now in his last fight, he wiped his opponent out in 40 seconds to get the, uh, the, the IBF, a 40 second knockout. Okay. So now he is the IBF uh, belt holder. Okay. So, I mean, if you think about it, right, you have Ricky Burns or this guy here, Julius, I'm not even going to butcher his last name, you know, Ricky Burns or this guy right here, Julius. So now. Terrence Crawford, he said himself, he said, I will only, you know, I'll only fight for a belt or Manny Pacquiao or Lomachenko. Okay, now, we know, I don't think we're going to get a Manny Pacquiao fight, at least not until probably the end of 2017. Even Freddie Roach said that, uh, you know, he, he, he feels that Pacquiao is not ready to drop, you know, to cut that weight. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with ducking and dodging. Uh, it's cutting weight, you know, dropping down to 140 from 147. Okay, he, he would like to acclimate Pacquiao to that weight and get him conditioned at that weight. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, especially when you're going in there with a guy like Crawford. In his prime, you know, he's got youth, uh, you know, everything on his side. Well, not everything, because, I mean, Pacquiao's a veteran, you could argue. I mean, who, who has the advantage, the veteran or, or, or you know, the young guy? But, uh, and then Lomachenko, uh, he's, he's gone on record, you know, he's saying, you know, look, I was, I was a featherweight, 126-pound fighter. I just moved up to super featherweight, okay, to 100, 130 pounds. Uh, and he, you know, and now Loma did say that he feels his natural weight is 130 pounds. So, he, you know, he's comfortable with that weight. All right. So, I mean, so where do you, I mean, what do you do? Uh, maybe a catch weight? I mean, obviously it would have to be a catch weight. I mean, so when you look at the dynamics of you, I mean, imagine you're the promoter, right? And you've got Manny Pacquiao. Okay. A guy that, has come out and said, you know, no, I won't do it until, you know, I'm ready and I have at least like one fight at light welterweight. And even Freddie, now Freddie Roach did say, you know, we might just skip the whole acclimation thing and drop to, to light welter, you know, and, and take a risk. But if we did that, you know, we're talking the end of 2017. We're trying to figure out who Crawford's next opponent is, meaning, uh, you know, in early 2017, who's he going to fight? So we, it's not going to be Loma. I mean, I tell you right now. But again, like I said in the beginning of the video, it could be. It could be Loma. Okay? Uh, anything can happen. It's boxing. I don't think it's going to be Manny Pacquiao because, uh, you know, like we, we just went over, you know, they want a little more time. And I completely understand that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, this guy here. I don't think it's going to be him, Julius Ndongo, or, in, man, I wish you guys would, like, tell me how to pronounce his name. Like, I even looked it up on YouTube, and I can't find, like, an English pronunciation of his name, you know, and I feel like an idiot trying to pronounce the guy's name, but, you know, I'm going to call him Julius. So we got Julius, and then we have Ricky Burns. I mean, it's got to be Ricky Burns. I mean, here it is. There's your winner right there. Ding, ding, ding. That's it. Ricky Burns. I mean, it's got to be him, right? Why not? I mean, Terrence Crawford, he already beat him, okay? I mean, you know, he already beat him, so he knows he can beat him again. Now, before I go, before I sign off, I want to read uh, a really, you know, a, a well-written article, it's a well-paragraph that I read uh, regarding Ricky Burns and Terrence Crawford. Okay, uh, let me find it real quick, guys. Um, <clears throat> okay, also the Miss Cropper, Julius and, and, and Dingo 2011. Oh wow, where did it go? Hang on, give me one minute, guys. Okay, uh all right. It says, the article, you know, it goes on to say, and I'm just going to read one little paragraph out of it. Now, the year 2017 is upon us, and there are many fights that can be made for, for the superstar. His goal is to win all the belts in the division, becoming the undisputed champion. He defeated Britain's Ricky Burns, 41-5-14 KOs, for the WBO lightweight title to win his first world championship two years later, 
it appears the two may be on a collision course as Burns, now the WBA uh, super lightweight champion. Burns has never been stopped in his career. Uh, that may change if given the chance against a much better fighter in Crawford from the last time they faced one another. And that's pretty much what it says. And then it goes on, I mean, quickly, just to talk about uh, the Julius here. Also in the midst of Crawford's reign is Julius, blah, blah, whatever his name is, 21-0 and 11 KOs. Uh, who scored a shocking first-round knockout against Russia's Edward Troy, Troy, Troy Anvonsky. Troy Anvonsky in 25-1 and 22 KOs to capture the IBF 140-pound uh, title. The Southpaw is relevantly unknown to the fight fans in the United States. I mean, like I said, I never even freaking heard of this guy. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I have no idea who he is, and I pretty much can guarantee you don't either. Uh, you know, Jay, just because I'm some YouTube boxing guy, I don't know every one of these damn guys, you know? Uh, so anyway, United States, but that shouldn't be a problem for Bob Aram and top ranked boxing to get the fight made. Okay. Let me see. Go to Crawford has options and his focus is on any champion who possesses a belt within the range. There's also the question of if, of if he'll ever get the chance to fight Manny Pacquiao, which would be a guaranteed pay-per-view bonanza, and it would. Okay, for now, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Hopefully, the question will get answered sooner than later. And really, guys, I think I've pretty much answered it. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it is boxing. Anything can happen, but uh, I, I really feel like it's going to be Ricky Burns. I mean, what do you think? Leave your comment below. Uh, I've, I've gone over 10 minutes and I promised I wouldn't. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off here. But, uh, yeah, and if you look, if you can think of anyone else, you know, drop it in the comment box. And, you know, and, and I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, what about Adrian Broner? Uh, you know, what what about, uh, you know, like a, a Victor Post or not a Victor Post all, but, a, you know, a, a Lucas Matisse or something like that. Well, he's retired. Okay, Broner is a, an Al Heyman fighter, you know, and then we know that Al Heyman just worked with top rank and then Terrence Crawford and the John Blaine Jr. fight, but they're not going to do it again. Now, one thing I want to add real quick, and this is kind of a little bit of inside information here. You know, let me get my piece of paper I wrote it down on. Uh, immediately following the Terrence Crawford and John Molina fight, a reporter um, you know, was interviewing Terrence Crawford, and he basically said, you know, hey, uh, you know, now that, that Al, Al Heyman and, and Bob, Bob Aram, top rank, are working together, you know, what do you think about a potential, you know, uh, maybe a Broner fight, like I just mentioned? And Terrence Crawford said, most likely no. He said, you know, we'll probably never work with uh, Al Heyman again. Okay, now, I mean, this is the kind of thing that should have been all over all over the news right but but it won't be i mean this is when you're when you're a reporter and you can like really get a chance to talk to these guys i mean they'll tell you things that they wouldn't you know necessarily announce to you know on, on, a, on a big you know huge platform like an hbo or an espn okay but he basically said you know he felt it was very unprofessional that uh that uh, john molina jr didn't make weight and he didn't like working with Al Heyman, he did, and, and neither did Bob Arum, top rank, you know, the whole team at top rank, Bob Arum, uh, even down to the actual fighter, Terrence Crawford, he just said, no, you know, we, did, we didn't like working with them, they were very unprofessional, and, uh, you know, I highly doubt I will ever fight another Al Heyman fighter, you know, and that's a quote, I mean, that's a quote, I mean, he just, you know, uh, you know, but then again, you know, you got to think about it. If they presented Broner to him, you know, he'd probably take it. But he might not, you know, because, I mean, he was pretty adamant in saying, no, we, you know, we will never work with Al Heyman again. You know, so anyway, I wanted to uh, to add that in there. So, yeah, recap, guys. We got Manny Pacquiao. There's not a chance, not till the end of 2017. Loma, quite comfortable at 130. Uh, this guy here, Julius, we don't know who he is. Uh Ricky Burns, I mean, he has a following. Uh, he kind of has, you know, a little bit of, you know, in the U with the UK fans, he's got a following. And I could see that, you know, being a, a decent fight. Definitely not a pay-per-view fight. Now, if they put that on pay-per-view, uh, I, I mean, I'd be pissed, you know. So, But it it's looking like this man right here, 
Ricky Burns. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, I put in a lot of hard work in this. Um, I mean, I've been looking into it for like two days, right? And uh, and I'm sure, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, well, you can just go Google it and try to, you know, read an article. We'll, we'll try. Go, you know, try. Because, I mean, there's a ton of con conflicting information out there. And not only that, uh, I don't like getting my information from Google. Uh, you know, I try to get it from, like, trusted people in the boxing community that I know. You know, so if you if you ever wonder where I get my news, I mean, yeah, sure, some of it I might read online, but I only do that to collaborate what I've been told by the people I trust and know that are that are in the know, people that are in the mix, you know, in the boxing community, uh, covering fights. You know, these are guys that cover the Crawford John Molina Jr. fight. I mean, I'm talking to, to those types of guys. Um, you know, getting my information. So anyway, leave your comment below, like, share, subscribe, counterpunch boxing. We are out.